Hi, I'm Mike from Craft Supplies USA and today I'm going to show you how to turn a cigar case. This kit requires a little more expertise than turning a pen, so I'll show you all the tips and tricks I've learned along the way after turning a bunch of these that'll make it easier for you when you go to try it. It's a really cool kit because you can throw your cigar in there and it has o-rings on all of the fittings that'll keep your cigar nice and moist while you travel with it. One of the nice things about this kit is it has a built-in punch so you don't have to carry a spare cutter with you and it's ready to go when you're ready to smoke. The standard length of the kit fits, you know, a double Corona or a Presidente sized cigar, but if you want to, you can shorten your tubes down like we're going to do in the video here to fit more of a Robusto or a Corona sized cigar as well. So let's get to the lathe and we'll show you how to turn it. So when we're turning our cigar case, the first thing that we need to do is get our blanks prepped. I have a couple pieces of figured maple here and I've cut these a little bit shorter than you can see on this one here. I want to make my cigar, cigar case to fit more of a Robusto or a Corona sized cigar. So I've gone ahead and cut my tube down and shortened it by about half. And then I have some figured maple and this stuff is exceptionally dry. When you're doing this kit, you want to make sure your material is either stabilized or really dry because this has a pretty thin wall, uh, wall thickness once it's finished and it will crack and split if it's wet. So make sure your wood's nice and dry and a nice hardwood as well, something that'll be durable and it'll hold up to abuse and you know carrying around in your pocket. So we've got our tubes cut and prepped. I've got my blanks cut and prepped and I've already got my center marks punched. So let's get these on the lathe. We'll round them down then we can put them in our chuck and drill them out for our tubes. So now that we have this between centers, give it a quick spin, make sure it clears your tool rest and then we'll turn this on to about 2,500 RPM. And I'm just turning this down to fit inside the chuck jaws that I have, so there's no exact dimension you need to go to, just make sure it'll fit in your chuck jaws. Okay, that's nice and flat, nice and rounded all the way across. The ends are still pretty square, but we will square these up when we go to drill it out. So we can take this piece out, get our next block. Get that mounted, then we can turn this on again and rough this one as well. And obviously, anytime you're turning, make sure you wear appropriate safety protection, whether a face shield, glasses, or a dust mask. Okay, now that's ready to go into our chuck jaws. So we'll take this out of the lathe and we'll take our safety drive out of our headstock. And I'll be using a VM100, and these have the shark jaws on them. This is a really good jaw for general mounting applications. I'll move that tool rest out of the way. Give that a good, nice seat. And then we can throw this in our chuck. When I seat this in the chuck, I don't want to go all the way to the base of the jaws because we will be drilling this out with a Forzner bit all the way through and I want to leave about an eighth of an inch of clearance between the end of the wood and the bottom of the chuck jaws. So I'll give myself a little bit of a gap, that way there's some room for that Forzner bit to come out of the blank. Give that a quick spin, and because we're not sitting flat on the bottom of the jaws, it's not going to run perfectly true the first time. So just give it a quick spin. Just need to loosen that up a little bit, and then we can kind of tap it back to center. Or we can use our revolving center to get that right on center. Perfect. Now we'll tighten this down. And if we turn this on, it should run true. Yeah, we're running nice and true here. So now we can take away the, two, the tail stock. And then we'll bring this up and then we'll use a skew just to square the face of the blank here. 
Um, it's a little bit rough sawn right now and, and that forage and a bit will tend to wander on that face. So we want to clean that up a little bit. And then we'll just recreate that dimple to help that Forzner bit get on center. Now we can move our tool rest out of the way and we'll take our revolving center out. All right, now we'll get our keyless chuck and we'll put this in the tail stock. And for this kit in particular, it uses a 24.1 millimeter drill bit. It's just under a 61 64 and it's the only bit we found to give us a really good fit with this tube. It's kind of a weird size, um, but that's the bit we're going to be using. We'll get that locked into our keyless chuck. And then I like to turn the lathe on, turn it down real slow. And then I kind of, I keep the tail stock loose. And then I push that until that drill bit finds its natural center point, And then we can lock everything down. That's gonna help that bit run a lot more true. And, and I could use a little bit shorter extension, but this is the one I have out here right now. So this is the extension we'll run. But then we can just start advancing the bit and our lathe is turning about 500 RPM. We'll back those shavings out. And we wanna clear those chips quite frequently. And then we'll slow down the drilling process once we're getting close to the end of that because I don't want to hit the chuck jaws. Okay, that sound. So once you're near the end of the blank, you'll hear the sound change as soon as you punch through the end of that. That's when you need to know to stop. That way you don't hit the chuck jaws. And I'll take this out of our keyless chuck. And this drill bit leaves us a really, really tight fit with this tube. It's almost too tight. So what I like to do is I'll grab a dowel or my chuck key and grab some 180 grit paper and we'll just sand that hole just to open it up just a tiny bit, not too much. Um, it's a pretty tight fit and I don't want to force the tube into the blank because it can crack it. Plus I want to have enough clearance once we press our parts into the tubes, they expand just a little bit. So I want to give us just enough clearance that we're not going to have any cracking going on. So we'll turn this back on, we'll keep our speed nice and slow, and we'll just use a, a little dowel and some sandpaper just to ream this out a little bit. And then we can test fit our tube. Perfect. A lot of times when you drill this out, depending on the material, it'll be so tight you can't even get the tube in there. So definitely use some sandpaper just to open it up a little bit. Now we can take this out. We've got a nice clean hole on this end, no blowout on the end. Nice and clean on this end. And the blank's about a quarter inch longer than the tube we cut. Now we'll do the same thing with this guy. We'll bring our revolving center back in to help us center this. And again, we want about an eighth inch gap between the chuck jaws at the bottom and the blank. And then we'll loosen that up so our revolving center gets that nice and on center again, then we can tighten that down. Give that a spin, make sure everything's running pretty true. Okay, that looks good. We'll bring this out of the way and we can true up the face again. We'll bump our speed back up. And then we'll true up that dimple just a hair if you need to. We'll drop our speed and put our keyless chuck back in. 
Get our Forzner bit in the extension. If you're turning the longer tube, the full length, you will need an extension than just using the bit. So keep that in mind. Get our speed back up to about 500. And then keep everything nice and loose until that bit finds its natural center point. Who needs to smoke a cigar when you have a dull Forzner bit, right? And then we want to slow down once we're close to going through the end of that blank. There it is. We can slide this back, get this out of the way. All right, so we'll get our Chucky with the sandpaper on here and we'll sand the inside of the blank again. Nice and slow. Again, we haven't changed our speed at all. Stop the lathe and give this a test. Okay, good fit. Nice and snug, not too tight. It's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so now that we have our blanks cut, drilled, and ready to go, ready to glue our tubes in, um, first thing we wanna do is we wanna prep our tubes by scuffing the outside with sandpaper. And a quick way to do that is what we can do is get our bushings that we're gonna be using for the kit and just put the tubes between the bushings and just sand them on the lathe. And for turning this kit, I like to use just a uh, 60 degree drive center and then my revolving center on this end. You can do it on the pen mandrel, that's what they're made for. They're made for going on a pen mandrel, but I find it to run just a little bit better just running between these because these bushings have a nice little 60 degree taper on the ends of the bushings as well, so. And then we'll put our bushings in the tubes. Mount those on the tapers. And then I have some 180 grit paper. We'll use this just to scuff this up. This will give us a nice bite with our glue that we're gonna be using. So there we go, we got a nice sanded surface. Grab our other tube, do the same thing. All right, now our tubes are prepped and ready to glue. So we'll set those off to the side. We'll set our bushings up here. So there's a couple different ways you can glue these in. You can use epoxy or CA glue. Um, depending on how much you sanded it, if you open the hole quite a bit, you can use epoxy because there'll be enough room. Um, but you see, if I put this in there, I've got a really, really tight fit here. So I'm gonna use CA glue instead. And we'll use the ultra thin glue boost fill and finish. It's gonna be nice and flexible. That way if the wood moves at all, it's not gonna crack on the tube and it'll wick nice and uh, deep into the wood and it'll give us a really good bond with our tubes. So that's the way I'm gonna glue these in today. So you can see this one, this one's really tight here at the very end. I'm gonna to have to press this in. And then I'll give it just a little extra press with my cone center, that's gonna seat that tube just inside the edge of the wood. And I've got plenty of wood on this side that will true up. So once I have my tube in, I'll get this one pressed in as well. So I'll be using the Glue Boost Fill and Finish Ultra Thin. This is gonna wick deep down in there, give us a really good bond between the tube and the wood. And I'll also use it to seal up the end grain on both ends. And that's gonna help keep those wood fibers together so they don't break apart during the turning process and they don't crack on us down the road. So I have the whip tip on here, so this is gonna give me a lot of control with the glue application. But I'm gonna, I'll start flooding the edge of the tube where it meets the wood, and we're just gonna let that wick all the way down through the blank in between the wood and the tube. And you can see on the end grain just how well that penetrates. And then I watch that puddle to disappear down into the tube, and then I fill it up again. And then we'll let that disappear. And then I'll finish filling up the end grain on this. Same thing on this blank. You can see just how well that wicks. And 
and you can see we already have glue coming out the bottom side of that blank. That's how well this stuff penetrates. So now that we have the top side done, we'll hit that with some activator and we'll flip these over. Uh, but it's pretty cool knowing that your glue is penetrating all the way down. And then we're going to do the same from this side to get 100% adhesion. Now I'll flood the end grain. Set that off to the side, and then we'll do this blank as well. If you do get glue inside the tube, you want to wipe that out as quick as you can because we don't want really any glue inside because that'll cause those parts to probably split the wood because now there's a lot more material on the inside. So make sure you wipe that out. And then we'll finish sealing the end grain on this side. And then we'll hit those with some activator. So now the next step is the barrel trim and there isn't a barrel trimmer that fits this tube. So the best thing to do is usually um, go to a disc sander or a bell sander, or I can show you how to make a little jig that we can use on the lathe to true up our blanks. So we'll put our chuck back on the lathe. And what I have here is just a small waste block that I've turned as a dowel to fit inside of our tubes. And this will be used to hold the blanks so we can true up the ends and square those up so they fit the parts correctly. So I'll mount my little waste block back in our chuck. Get that tightened down nice. And then this should fit the dowel I turned before. Just a nice little friction drive. I'll press that on there and give it a spin, make sure everything's running pretty good. If you need to, you can rotate it around usually and that'll help true it up just a little bit more. Okay. Now that that's running, let's bump our speed up. I use my spindle roughing gouge just to true up the exterior. And then we'll use the skew to true up the end. And I want to go just until the brass tube is nice and flush with the end of the blank. Give that a quick check. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. Maybe one more cut. All right, and while I have this mounted, I want to get some sandpaper. And I like to sand just the inside of the brass tube where the parts are going to press in. That way, if there's any glue residue or anything, I can clean that up right now. All right, now we'll take this off and flip it around. See, now we have a nice clean cut surface. It's nice and trued up with the end of the blank. And now we'll do the same on this side. All right, now we'll do the same thing with the sandpaper. Just removing any CA glue residue we might have in here. I can still see just a tiny bit. I can flake that out though. All right, now this one's trued up on both ends, sanded lightly on the inside, and that's ready to mount between our bushings and turn. Do 
do a couple peel cuts to get the bulk out of the way, then we can go to a slice. Got a nice clean surface here, nice and trued up. Okay, I went just past the tube, just a hair, so I'll trim up the tube. And then we'll get our sandpaper. Nice clean surface, cleaned up the tube. Now this guy's ready to mount between the bushings. So I'll take this jam chuck off and I'll save this for later. So if you're doing a bunch of these, you can reuse these guys. So just set them aside. We'll get our 60 degree drive. We'll grab our bushings, press those in, and then we can bring up our revolving center for support on this end. And then we'll turn these one at a time. If you wanted to, it comes with the middle bushing so you could turn the entire cigar case at one time. Um, but I tend that's a little bit too flimsy and wobbly just because of the overall length. So I like turning these one at a time. All right, now that we have this mounted between our bushings, let's get our spindle roughing gouge, get this rough to shape, then we'll use our skew to get our final passes. Then we can sand and throw some dye on it. Turning speed's about 2,500 RPM now. I'll leave about an eighth inch over the bushings and then we'll go to our skew. If you wanted to, you could shear scrape with the wing. Or we can go to our skew, give us a good planing pass. Just ride that bevel. That should leave us a really clean surface off the tool. And that'll minimize our sanding. You can see we have a really clean surface. So we'll finish getting this side down to our bushing and then we'll go ahead and sand. Okay, we're just slightly proud of the bushing so now we can start sanding. So I'll slide that out of the way and we'll grab our 180. Anytime you're sanding, you want to throw on appropriate protection. Grab your dust mask or a respirator. Now we'll go up to our 240. Then we'll go 320. And it doesn't take much sanding, especially when the blank's really short like this. So we've got a really good surface. 
Um, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and apply your final finish. On this cigar case, on this cigar case, we'll throw on some chocolate dye to match this one here. I think it gives it a really good look to it over just the plain maple, and it shows off the figure quite a bit. So we're gonna do the same dye on this guy. So I'll set this over here and we'll grab our dye and some gloves, and I'll show you how to put that on. All right, so I'll be using the Artisan Chocolate Dye. So we'll just throw our gloves on. Just wipe the blank down, get it free of dust and debris. And then I'll tear off a small section on my rag. And we'll use smaller bottle of dye here. These have a handy nozzle applicator on them. And I like to flood the pad with dye and then we'll just wipe it on. You can see it accentuates the grain, gives it a nice tobacco color on this maple, looks really sharp. And for our final finish, I'll be applying it off the label. We just use tried and true. For our final finish, if you wanted to, you could get a, you know, a cigar label off of a bigger you know, 60 ring gauge plus cigar, put it on there and do a CA finish, do something cool. Um, you could do just a regular CA finish, do some spray lacquer, whatever you want. But I'll be using the tried and true on this guy. So just keep wiping it in until you have a nice even coverage. And then we can set that off to the side and then we can take this off the lathe. And because it's alcohol based, this stuff dries really, really fast but I think it gives it a really pretty look and it makes that figure really pop. The other thing I like to do too is I do like to dab the ends of the end grain here just to make sure that they're the same color as the rest of the blank. So I'll just get our dye pad and just put some dye on those to make sure it's all uniform and consistent. I think it looks better. So we'll set this off to the side We'll get our other blank, get our bushings mounted, we'll turn this and do the exact same process. Make sure you take your rubber gloves off before you turn. You don't want to get them caught on the lathe. Get our skip spindle roughing gouge back out. Switch back to our skew, get a couple planing cuts. Okay, and now we're ready for sandpaper. Then I like to just give it a quick sand with the grain. Give that a little wipe down, get the dust off. Fold that over and give us a nice little applicator pad. And I like to saturate that, give myself plenty of dye. And then we'll just rub that in circular motion. Make sure we get a good even blend across the surface. Try to eliminate any streaking we might have in the dye. And then we'll inspect it, make sure everything's blended nice and even. Make sure we don't have any issues in the surface or any tear out that we need to go back and sand it or dress. So it looks pretty good and nice and clean. And then with your rags with dye on them, because they are flammable, we'll lay those out, let those air dry before we throw them in our garbage can. And then make sure you put your caps back on your dye bottle so you don't spill them. So we'll take the bushings off and then we'll hit the ends of the blank, just like we did on the first one. Okay, it looks nice and sharp, both ends. And then we got a nice surface on the blank. So now that we have this turn, we'll set, we'll clean off the lathe bed, we'll apply our finish, and then we'll let it sit overnight. And then we can finally get this pressed together and assembled and show you how cool it looks. All right, so now that we have our blanks turned, we have our dye on, everything's nice and trued up and cleaned up. These are ready to apply our final finish. And I'll be using the tried and true, this is the original. This is just their good original formula we've used a lot. 
and it comes in a nice handy little bottle. So I'll get a little applicator pad and we'll just wipe this finish on. Nice thing is it's food safe, non-toxic, and it goes on real easy, but you can see it pops the finish quite a bit. So we'll just put a nice generous coat on. I'll let it sit for about an hour and then I'll come back and see if there are any dry spots in the finish. I'll throw another coat on and then we'll let that sit overnight. I like to get the end grain as well. You don't have to if you don't want to, but it'll help seal that dye in there just a little bit as well. So got that one coated. Now we'll get this blank coated. I think that chocolate dye really makes that maple pop. It looks a lot more like a tobacco leaf. I think it looks really nice and sharp. Play around with some different materials and styles, see what you think. Make sure this is nice and coated. Uh, but like I was saying, we'll come back in about an hour and I'll make sure there's no dry spots. And if so, I'll just throw a little bit more on and then we'll let this sit overnight. So now that I have these coated, let's leave them. We'll let those sit. Um, we'll come back in an hour or so and apply any more if we need to. And then we'll see you tomorrow morning after we let this cure and then we'll assemble it and get this thing put together. All right, so we've let our finish cure for 24 hours and then I applied a top coat of goat wax and now our blank is ready to assemble. So I've laid out all my parts here and now we'll use our pen press and get this put together. For the bottom piece, I'll be using a bushing because this is a little too small and it'll fit inside the tube. So I'll use the bushing to help me press these together. And I applied a little bit of wax on the inside of the brass tube just to help these press together and not bind up or anything. So I'll use this piece. This is gonna be our top cap. This has the punch in it, so I'll save that for the top. This is our bottom cap. I'll get that roughly centered and then we can put that onto our press. Make sure all the parts are nice and straight before you press them in. Make sure those are seated. If they're crooked, it'll crack your tubes or crack the blank, so you wanna make sure everything's nice and straight before you put it in. And then I like to have if I unscrew this, I like this piece to be on the bottom of the cigar case. So I'll thread that in and I'll just press this whole piece in together at one time. Get that started. And then we might need to use that bushing again. So I'll line those two up, give ourselves a little extra space here and then we can press this together. All right, and then you can see a little bit of a gap right here. That's just because I haven't threaded this all the way on, but our threaded coupler is pressed in nice and flush. So I'll set this off to the side. And I did have the grain lined up here when it was sitting on the bench. And so what you can do is thread these back together Make sure it's seated nice and tight where it'll stop when it's closed. And then we can line up our grain and press this together. So that looks good. I'll get this one started. And then we'll use that bushing again. Once I have it started, if you don't have enough travel on your pen press, you can unscrew it now that we have our grain alignment. We'll set the lower tube off to the side. We'll put our bushing back in. I need my other bushing too. We'll use both those bushings to hold those in place. And then we'll press this in nice and square. Make sure everything's seated. Make sure you don't have any gaps. Get those bushings out of the way. Just double check and make sure everything looks nice and straight and then it's pressed together completely. Now we use our punch end. We'll get that started.
All right, once you have it started, make sure everything's nice and square, and then we can finish pressing this in. All right. And one thing I like to do on these is it's really hard to thread this um, center punch cap end all the way in with this O-ring here, so I like to remove it just so I can get it a little bit easier to take it on and off. Um, you're really not going to lose that much of the moisture sealing ability with the O-ring missing, and it makes it a lot easier to take your cap off. So if you want to keep it in place, go ahead. I like to keep the O-ring off on this end. All right, so I like to take this O-ring off. It just makes threading your center punch cap end makes it a lot easier to take it on and off. So if you want to keep the O-ring on, keep it on. If you want to take it off to make it a little easier, go ahead. Uh, but this is our cigar case now. Now we can put our cigar in. And then this is a good carry size for those smaller Coronas or the Presidente size cigars. But once you thread it on, make sure your grain aligns nice. Um, but I think it's a really good looking kit with that die we put on the blank. It shows off the figure really well. And then we have the two different sizes depending on the, the size of cigar you want to carry. So it's cool that you can shorten it and modify it to suit the cigars that you like. Um, but it's a really fun kit and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Otherwise, subscribe to our channel for more wood turning videos.